Hello everyone, welcome once again. So this is uh, part two of the video series on cash flow statement. Right, welcome, I'm Will Di Chia and you're watching this on my YouTube channel. Now, so this continues with uh, more details on cash flow statements. All right, as I mentioned before in, my, in the first part of the video that this series is meant for students who are doing it for the first time. So if you've done it before, this might be a bit too slow, too simple for you. Okay, so the scope for today, uh, very simple introduction to the more complicated cash flow statement examples. And then we look at the indirect method and discuss the differences with the direct method. All right? And uh, of course, not to forget, we will also have a simple example to illustrate how to prepare a simple cash flow statement using the direct method. And we will have a closure. Okay, so let's see. Right, cash flow statements are definitely not as simple as uh, those that you have seen in part one of this video series. Okay, in an actual exam, especially if you're doing this, uh, you know, for the FIA, the uh, FFA program, or even the F3 from the ACCA, they are definitely not this simple. Right, in reality, there are cases where businesses conduct transactions on credit basis. If they do, then this will affect, you know, uh, the preparation process for the cash flow statement, right? And when I talk about credit transactions, I'm referring to not just sales to customers. It also includes purchases from vendors, right, both. So let us have a look at a simple example to illustrate this, right? Okay, so we will reuse a simple uh, modified example from part one of the video series. If you remember, I did review the A company. Right, so the A company has once again provided us the financials for the year ended thirty first December twenty fourteen, together with the balance sheet, uh, as at thirty first December twenty fourteen, as well as twenty thirteen. Now, if I have not mentioned this in the earlier video, the reason why we have to use two years of balance sheet is because you need to analyze and study whether there is any change in assets especially non-current assets so any purchase of non-current assets or disposal of non-current assets has to be reflected in the cash flow statement right that's why you have two balance sheets side by side so that you're able to analyze whether there is any purchase or disposal the same thing here the current assets is also very important because by comparing the current assets of two years same thing it allows you to analyze uh, what caused the change or what changes have taken place in the current assets are there more inventories obviously in this case there are no additional inventories but however there are additional receivables okay what could that mean it possibly may mean that out of this two thousand dollars of sales a hundred dollars were conducted on credit basis okay so this may actually mean this that $100 may be on cash basis, apologies, not cash basis, I mean credit basis. Then what about the remaining 1009 These would probably be on cash basis. So that makes up to 2000 okay? That could be the case. Now if you look on, then uh, you notice that cash in hand or a bank has changed by, has changed from 150 to 700 Okay, so that means cash balances has increased over the period from 2013 to 14, right? Cash balances did increase, and we find that the overall increase is 550. Now, why has cash balances increased by 550? So, this is what we will need to investigate, okay? Because it seems like the change in cash balance doesn't seem to be just due to profits from operations. It seems like there is more reason as to why the cash balances have increased from 150 to 700. Looking on, observe that payables have likewise increased from 0 to 250. Why has that been increased? That may be due to, you know, one reason may be that out of the purchase of 1,002, 250 may be on credit. That means it was uh, purchased on credit and has not been paid up yet as of 
end of the year as you can see here then what about the remaining which is 1002 minus 250 what ha would be the 950 here the remaining of 950 would probably be on cash basis because it's fully paid out then it's not shown as a payable okay good what about operating expenses well there is no uh, you know accrued expenses here so it seems like all operating expenses are fully paid in cash it seems like the case okay of course if you see something like here let's say for example if there are any accrued expenses then that may imply that not all the expenses are paid out okay but in our case there is no such thing okay looking on shareholder funds there is no change it remain constant reserves remain constant retail earnings increase from 100 to 500 while that is due to the additional profits 100 plus 100 results in 500 so that's fine okay so the task here okay the additional information says that there are no disposal or there were no disposal or acquisition of non-current assets for the year ended 31st December 2014 your job is to prepare the cash flow statement using the direct method for the year ended 31st December 2014 so let's go back to the page Right, and this is what we'll do now when preparing the cash flow statement it is very important that you memorize and try to recall the format as best as you can that's important let's begin with the cash flow statement right as I've uh, mentioned to you in the first part of this video series it is very essential for you to have the proper heading the heading is essential especially if you're taking this you know at the professional level right so Cash flow statement for year ended 31st December 2014. Now, of course, if you like, you can spell out in full, you know, it doesn't matter actually. 2014. Okay, great, that's fine. So the cash flow statement is made up of uh, approximately about three portions, right? The first part, which is actually the uh, cash flow from operating activities, right? Cash flows from operations. Okay, part one. Now the the wording may differ depending on the course that you're taking. So do check back to the textbook and see if there is any uh, specific way that your lecturers insisted that you follow. All right, in terms of the wording. Okay, so let's find out collections. from sales and receivables All right let's see so we have observed here that the collections is only 1009 All right the reason is because there is this 100 that wasn't collected at end of 2014 so that gives you 1900 now the next thing so there were payments payments to payables and there were also payments for operating expenses so the payables quite simple as I've analyzed for you earlier on 950 was paid to for to the payables right and then there were operating expenses which in this case 400 which we assume that it is all fully paid so this gives us the net cash flow from operating activities. All right, so thousand nine minus nine fifty minus four hundred. So there is positive cash flow from operating activities. Okay, item two. So we move on to the next item, which is cash flows from investing. Right, what do we mean by investing? So when we talk about investing, it means purchase and sale of fixed assets. Now in this case, in the example, 
were there any purchase of assets or sale of assets? Apparently there isn't any. Question has also mentioned that under additional information, there is no disposal or acquisition of non-current assets in the year. So that's very simple. There are no uh, cash flows due to investing activities. Three. Okay, what about three here? Now three is quite simple. Basically that is the cash flows from financing. Now are there any financing activities? So let's observe. Are there any long-term liabilities in the balance sheet? As you can see here, there isn't any. Are there any additional shares that were issued? There isn't any. So in terms of the financing activities, there were none. So overall, 550 plus nothing, plus nothing, or 550 plus not, plus not gives you 550. So this is the net increase in cash and cash equivalent. Now this is the technical term that is used in the financial reporting standard, right? 7, okay, FRS 7. So if you wish to, you know, have uh, this whole uh, statement written, it's fine. If you want to shorten it, actually it depends on your examiner, right? You can refer to it as net increase in cash. That works too, but depending on your program. Okay, so net, okay, then you have the opening, balance of cash. If you wish to be more complete, you can also indicate and cash equivalents if you like to. All right. So what is the opening balance of cash? So observe here, in 2013, opening balance of cash is 150. 150. So that gives you a total of 700. So 700 is the closing balance of cash. And if you like, just add on and cash equivalents. So how do we know if the answer is correct? Now watch the 700 here. So this 700 is the closing balance. And this happened to be the same as the figure represented in 2014 in the balance sheet right here, 700. So that means the cash flow statement is correctly prepared. As you can see here, right? Okay, so that's how you do it. Not too difficult. Now obviously in your exams, if you're taking the ACCA or the FIA, uh, is definitely not as simple as this example. It will be more complicated. If you're taking this in the Masters in Professional Accounting, you can be sure that it will be even more complicated. Okay, so that's fine. Okay, so that there we have done the simple example too. And this is using the direct method. Now the unique thing about the direct method is that the operating cash flows, okay, for if you're using the direct method, the operating cash flows is derived by taking collections from sales minus all payments. Right, so that's the direct method going on. Okay, then what if we wanted to do this using the indirect method? Now the indirect method basically uh, is slightly different. Okay, it's a slightly different way to derive the operating cash flows. Right, now if you want to do this, let's say using this same example, let's say you wanted to apply indirect method on simple example one. How different would it be? Let me illustrate. Okay, let, to make it more interesting, let's put it side by side so you can see the uh, contrast. Okay, so on the left hand side, I have the direct method. So I'm going to present to you the indirect method on the right hand side. Okay, basically there is nothing very different uh, for the uh, indirect method. Okay, likewise, you need to have the heading. Okay, which you will need to indicate uh, that it is for whatever uh, period applicable for the end so on okay so watch the key thing is that you have to have the amount and then uh, same thing like this in direct method you have to indicate uh, cash flows from operations cash flows from 
operations. Now this is the very unique part. Instead of starting with collections from receivables or sales, you begin with uh, what you call that the net profit. Okay. Supposedly is before interest and tax. Okay. But in my example, there is no interest and tax. It's very simple. So you will not need to worry about whether it's before or after uh, interest and tax. Okay, so this isn't applicable here. All right, but when you do your question, you have to check for that. Okay, so how much is net profit for this period? 400. Okay, now for the indirect method, you have to perform uh, some additional steps, a bit different. You need to uh, input any adjustments for non cash items now non cash items would be uh, stuff like for example bad debts which obviously isn't in this question items such as depreciation which happen not to be in this question as well all right since they are not in the question, you do not need to write them down. But I wrote them down anyway, just for your reference. After which, you have to uh, go on and, you know, do this, perform this step, which is add less changes in working capital. Now, this part is very, uh, uh, what you call it, simple, but it, it can be a bit, uh, you know, confusing to some people. So there are about three items in working capital that has apparently changed. Actually, it's two. So you need to identify what the changes in working capital, excluding cash. Okay. I emphasize, please exclude cash, and I mean uh, cash in hand and cash at bank. Okay. So there is the inventory. Were there any inventory changes? Okay, there were none. Right, let me show you. So there were no inventory changes over the period. But receivables, apparently, there was a change. It was an increase of 100. So there were increases in receivables of, in this case, 100. No, increases in receivables, it represents that cash is tied up. Okay. And in this case, it's tied up with receivables. So this represents a decrease in cash flows. Right? Just imagine a friend owing you $100. So long as your friend has not paid out, it means that there is an outflow of cash from your wallet. At the same time, payables have increased by 250, 250 from 2013 to 2014. Now, an increase in payables is a bit different. It means that there are more amounts owing to creditors because more amounts are owing to creditors it means that no payment is made the result is that there are more cash flows now observe with all those items that you have gotten now there is no interest in tax so it's quite straightforward okay net off 400 minus 100 plus 250 the result that you have is just 550 now this 550 is known as changes in, no, sorry, not changes, apologies, known as net cash flow from operating activities. Now, did you realize that this and the indirect method observe did you realize that the answer is exactly the same for the direct method you we have gotten 550 from the net cash flow from operating activities however when we apply the indirect method now this is indirect method we realize that the net cash flow from operating activities is likewise 550 so then uh, the rest of the parts, which is like, uh, you know, part two, 
the cash flow from cash flow from investing right which is actually zero right we found that out earlier on right and then our uh, stuff like the cash flow from financing which we find that it is also likewise the same okay so actually the rest of the cash flow statements are the same whether you know you have to use indirect method or the direct method part two and three remains the same right the key thing that changes when you use the indirect method is that the way you derive the operating cash flow is quite different okay because you will have to adjust for non-cash items then next add less changes in working capital before you can finally derive the net cash flow from operating activities so that makes it different let me zoom out okay can you see that uh, it's a bit small the difference is quite obvious all right so in the exam if you're asked to do the direct method it obviously means that no indirect okay so it's uh, you have to be very clear which is which okay so that's my uh, simple example okay so what if we had to do this using the indirect method, so which I've illustrated to you? Not too bad. So the two methods basically does the same thing. That is to derive operating cash flows using different approaches. If the calculations are performed correctly, the results from both have to be exactly the same every time. Okay? Now, so what we're going to do is that we're going to do one more example. Now this example is a bit different. It has the purchase of non-current assets. Okay, everything is the same like the earlier example. And in this example, you have to prepare the cash flow statement using the direct method. Okay, so let's begin. In this uh, example, so A limited once again close the year for uh, ending 31st December 2014 so you have the income statement at uh, ending 31st December 2014 as well as the balance sheets right so notice that in this case the non current assets have increased by 200 so there probably was a purchase right inventories have declined from 100 to 0 receivables have increased from 0 to 100 Cash balance increased from 50 to 500. Payables increased from not to 250. Okay, and then we find that the ordinary share capital remains constant. Reserves are constant. Retail earnings have increased from 100 to 500. And this is due to the net profits of 400 in the year. Okay, so we are ready to start. Same thing like we would always do. Start by having the heading written. Right, for year ended thirty first December twenty fourteen. So like the earlier examples you should start with the cash flows from operations. Okay, so in our case we found that um there were more purchases more purchases right thousand and two right but uh the above uh, you notice that there were inventories at the beginning of 100 let me amend my example so this is supposed to be thousand one so there should be a hundred here for opening inventories okay so that wasn't uh, shown Okay, so opening inventories is 100, purchases 1,100, so that gives you 1,002, okay? Now, let's start with the question. In this case, we found that uh, the sales was in total 2,000, right? And then there were still some receivables to still owe 100 at end of 2014. 
So that means a hundred were on credit, thousand and nine probably on cash terms. Okay. So we have the collections from sales or the receivables that made up to thousand and nine. Okay, so we have also the payments. So how much were the payments? Payments, as you can see here, total purchase was thousand uh, one hundred. So the payables was only two fifty at the end. So that means two fifty was on credit. What about the remaining? Thousand one minus two fifty. That tells you that 850 must be paid up by cash. The same for the earlier example, the operating expenses assume to be paid up by cash as well. So the payments to payables 850, and then we have also the uh, operating expenses, which is uh, 400. So that gives you. 1009 minus 850 minus 400 that gives you 650 okay so same like the earlier uh, case we have to also you know continue to indicate that this is net cash flow from operating activities okay so quite simple okay to cash flows from investing. Now, unlike the earlier examples we did, in this case there is actually a purchase of uh, non current asset. Now, the purchase amount is quite obvious 500 to 700 diamonds is a purchase of 200, presumably. 200 okay now so this 200 happens to be the net cash from um, investing activities or use in investing activities there are no additional share capital uh, raised so 3 cash flows from financing remains at 0 so total cash flows have increased. Then increase in cash. If you like, you can also include the wordings and cash equivalents. Okay, opening balance of cash. How much is that? Fifty. So you have the opening balance of cash, which is fifty. Therefore, closing balance of cash is 500. How will we know if the 500 is correct? Very simple. Let's come back to the balance sheet 2014. And we find the 2014 balance sheet shows that cash in hand and at bank is 500. So that means the cash flow statement is correctly prepared. Like that. Okay? Not too bad. So that was using the direct method. You might want to try the indirect method, but it, would, uh, it shouldn't be more complicated. So in the closure, okay, so what we have done in this video is that we have seen some more complicated examples, right, involving uh, uh, situations where there are receivables and payables, right. We have seen the differences between the direct and indirect methods. Okay, well, this is not a very comprehensive review, but you should have observed some of the very obvious and fundamental differences between the two methods. Right? Students often ask the question of like whether they need to know both methods. Okay? Now, my advice and my answer to this is that you have to know both. Okay? You can't just know one method but not know the other. Okay? Especially as accounting students, you have to be familiar with both because both methods give you different uh, angles of looking at the same set of figures. 
both uh, methods give you a different perspective of how uh, operating cash flows are derived. Okay, so get yourself familiarized now, and then uh, this is not uh, something that you want to do last minute. You want to practice this a lot, especially. All right. So, and finally, uh, I would say that uh, we have done quite uh, a fair bit. We will be having a third part of this, uh, you know, a part, a part three of this video series. And this part three of the video series will cover even more complicated examples. All right. And I hope that you will follow up and then have a uh, part three of this video series. Thank you for watching and I'm Wildy Chia and you have been watching this on my YouTube channel. Thank you.